we're going to be proving trig ratios at 0 degrees and also at 90. These are a lot easier to remember than when we did 30, 45, and 60 last quarter. Start with any right triangle and shrink the angle to 0. So question 1 on your note says, what shape do you start with? Well, obviously a triangle. You can't have a trig ratio unless you have a triangle. Trigonometry is always all about adjacent, hypotenuse, and opposite. And now that we've done this assignment last week so much, hopefully by now you're really familiar with wh which each of those are. So that's triangle for number one. And just draw, it, draw a generic triangle like this. It doesn't have to be exact, but you will have to label it theta. O for opposite, A for adjacent, and H for hypotenuse. Here's what we're doing with the triangle, uh, alluding to number three. Notice that when this angle right here shrinks, the height of the triangle shrinks also, to the point where it basically becomes a straight line. Okay, We see that as theta shrinks to zero, the opposite side also shrinks to zero. So this side right here, I know it's really small from where you're looking, but this is going to become zero. This triangle will become a straight line if theta becomes zero. We also see that as theta shrinks to zero, that h becomes a. In other words, there, there, there will be no opposite side if theta becomes zero. It'll be a straight line. And the reason h equals a is because when this becomes a straight line, this hypotenuse has no other choice to overlap the adjacent side. So we're going to use all of that information, just those basically two pieces of information, three and four, to answer the rest of the, the questions about the trig functions at zero. Now you can just draw number five. You can kind of draw what I have here. Um, for whatever reason, I don't have it all drawn out. The, the, final, the final diagram will just look like this. Once it becomes a straight line, you'll have H here and A here, they become the same thing. And here, you would have theta equals zero degrees. Zero, because it's a straight line. There is no triangle left. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So what have, we've already proven here that the opposite side is zero. I mean, there's no, there's no opposite side left, right? So if we have O over H, it's zero over H, which is what? What is zero over H? or zero over anything? Zero. zero. OK. So the proof is real simple. OK. If sine is O over H and the opposite side is zero, then sine of zero degrees is zero. Doesn't get much easier than that. OK. Sine of zero is always zero. You can use that calculator we've been using. You can type sine of zero, and it's going to give you zero back. But we've just proven that, why that is. Any questions on that one? Would you like to write all these steps? Yes, I would like you to, please. As you are finishing that up, who remembers the definition of cosine? Cosine equals what? Whatever what? A over h. OK, so cosine is a over h. Now, if, if we go back and look at our little diagram here, a and H become the same thing. Well, what happens when you divide something by itself? It's just 1, right? So we've proven that cosine of 0 equals 1. Shh. When you divide something by itself, it becomes 1. So cosine of 0 is always 1. So just to re reiterate, sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. And that's because it's a straight line. The adjacent and the hypotenuse are the same thing. And you know, I, as I've said this before, certain students memorize the diagram. They don't memorize these actual figures. If you, if you can just visualize this, this gives you everything you need to know. Opposite equals 0. If you can just think about this straight line and you know the trig definitions, it all comes from here. And again, this is why cosine of 0 is 1, because you're just dividing something by itself, which is 1. All right, next we have tangent. What's the definition of tangent? Opposite over adjacent. 
the reason that tangent of zero is zero is the same reason that sine of zero is zero. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, but the opposite side is zero. So it doesn't matter what the adjacent side is, this turns to zero. I'll go back to this in just a second, but just to recap, sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one, and tangent of zero is also zero. So now we're gonna do the next three trig functions, which are just flipped <coughs> versions of the first three. So next is cosecant. Instead of O over H, it's for sine, it's H over O. Now, um, I want to make this very clear because I know students get this confused all the time. Okay, there's a difference between when zero is in the top and zero is in the bottom. So we already said zero over five, zero over three, whatever is zero, right? But when you have zero on the bottom, it's a different thing. I don't have time to go into all this right now. But you can't divide by zero, okay? That's just the, sh the short, short explanation. You get undefined back. So when zero is on the bottom, it's undefined. When zero is on the top, it's zero. So for this reason, because cosecant is h over o, we can definitively say that cosecant of zero degrees doesn't exist or it's undefined. And again, that's because zero is on the bottom. But it doesn't matter, right? Because even though secant is flipped, h over a, they're still the same thing. They still come from that straight line. H and the hypotenuse and the adjacent side are the same. So secant of zero is also one. So, so far we've shown that sine and tangent are both zero, cosine and secant are both one, and then we have cosecant being undefined. That's gonna lead us to cotangent. There's only three values to learn for zero. It's either gonna be zero, one, or undefined. Real simple. Finally, we have cotangent. So cotangent is the flipped version of tangent. Tangent's O over A. Cotangent is A over O. But going back to the diagram, the opposite side turned to zero. So again, when you divide by zero, you get undefined or does not exist. So cotangent of zero is zero to is uh, undefined, sorry. I want to recap one more time just because there's only three values to learn. This might help you to remember them. So both sine and tangent are both zero at zero degrees. All right, then we showed that cosine and secant are both one. <coughs> and then finally, cosecant and cotangent are both undefined. This is all at zero degrees.